שלום, 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 שלום. As always, first I want to give all the praises and the glory to the Most High Yehawah and the Son Yehawah Shai. Vakao Palau Yehawah Vahashav Yehawah Shai Vahashav Makar Kodash Yehawah is the Most High's name. on properly. Yahweh is the Most High's name, and Yahweh Shai is the name of the Son. So the word Yahweh means He is. He is the Deliverer. The name Yahweh Shai. So like Yahweh Shai means He is. He, he is. He is the Deliverer. Sorry, and Yahweh. See, can you see the weather's changed today, right? It's, it's, got, it's got my brain on heat. <laughs> so lucky. And the word Yahweh means he is or he is to be. So he is the Father. He is, he is to be. He has no beginning. He has no end. Yahweh Shai is the name of the Son, which means he is the deliverer. Deliverer of who? Of the children of Israel. So today's edification is called, Hear, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen. Hear. O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, who I have chosen. So, as we, as I like to always remind you that the Lord, our Lord, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, he only came for the children of Israel. He didn't come to deliver any other nation. He only came to deliver the children of Israel, the children of Yasharala. And in these last days, as we always, as I always like to remind you, he's only coming for the elect. Now yesterday we did a live streaming yesterday on the highways and hedges. Um, gather yourselves together, gather yourselves together, O nation shall not desire, talking about the true children of Israel. Today we're gonna emphasize a bit more on that, on when we say, that the Lord is only coming for the children of Israel and only the elect. How do we know these things? We know these things through Bible prophecy, through the Bible scripture, through the word of our Savior, the Most High Yehowah and Yehowah Shai. As you can see, the weather's changed exceedingly today. Let me tell you, yesterday it was about 10 Celsius. Today, this is England for you, isn't it? This is the UK. Today it is 22 Celsius. <laughs> it's, it's more than doubled. What it was a few days ago, right? Yesterday, sorry, should I say? It's more than doubled. So, you know, as you can see, so you're, gonna, you're probably going to hear a lot of people around. As, I'm out, as, I'm, as you can see, we're out again. See, we could do this live broadcast out in the elements in the fresh air. So, where do we want to start? Let's go to. Let's go to, before I get surrounded by demons. I'm going to start in. I'm going to start in, let me start where today's edification comes from. Isaiah 44. And then I'm going to go, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of mix it up. We're going to do what we do best. We're going to mix up. We're going to go precepts from the Old Testament to the New Testament. All right? Because it's, it's always nice to give it a nice, fine balance between the two. Okay? So we're going to start in the book of Isaiah, chapter 44. And remember, when we do these edifications, you should be taking notes, writing down scriptures. You should be learning. Right? You should be learning what it is that we are teaching. So you can truly understand. So you yourselves can go back over what it is you heard in the lesson. It's just like, you know, it's just like when you watch a movie, right? You watch a movie and you, you've you watched it and you've really enjoyed what you've seen, but there were some things you didn't recollect. So you, you, you watch it again and again and again. Well, what we'd always advise you is to write down the precepts that we speak on, that we call on, right? Precepts that we're gonna talk on and speak on today and in every other lesson that we do in our edification. And I also, um, I forgot to give the, come back to that, no dramas, no dramas. So, 
This is uh, Isaiah 44, verse 1. Yet now hear, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen. This is where desertification comes from. Isaiah 44, verse 1. Thus says the Lord that made thee and formed thee right, from the womb, which will help thee. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant. Because ultimately we are the Lord's servant. right? We are his servants. We're here to serve the Most High. And we're here to fear the Most High. All right? To those are two major things that we must understand. We're here to serve the Most High. We're not here to serve our own purpose. We're here to serve the Most High, Yahweh. His name is Yahweh, as I said before. And we're here to fear the Most High, Yahweh. So we should fear Him too, all right, while we are serving Him. We should be serving the Most High, Yahweh, in fear. Love comes after that. Fear is the first thing he wants, to fear the Lord. Because if you fear him, you will serve him with love. You will do the things that he asks of you to do. Right? Hence why I always say this is why we, Israelites, this is why we went off. Because we lost that fear for the Most High. We started to believe in ourselves. That we were the, um, the captains of our destiny. When ultimately it's the Most High, Yahweh, who's the captain of our destiny. And he wants Israel to fear him, but we are his servants. We are the Most High's servant. All right. I hope you can hear me clearly as well. So, verse two, Isaiah forty-four, verse two. It says, "Thus says the Lord." Yeah? And then remember, when you see the word "Lord" in capitals, it's talking about the Most High Yahweh, whose name is Yahweh. Yah means he, Yahweh to be or is to be. All right. Anytime you see the word Lord in capitals in the Bible, it is speaking on the Most High. Or when you see Lord God, it's speaking on the Most High. All right, Yahweh. So it's verse 2. It says, Thus says the Lord, Yahweh, that made thee and formed thee from the womb, which will help thee. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and thou, Jeshurun, whom I have chosen. Now, Jeshurun is another name for Israel. All right? It's another poetic name that the Most High, Yahweh, uses to refer to Israel. So when he says Jeshurun, he's talking about Israel, which, uh, which means God sow or God seed, should I say. All right? It's talking about the children of Israel. It says, My servant who I have chosen, if I will pour out, verse 3, Isaiah 44, verse 3. For I will pour out water upon him that is thirsty. And what is that water? That water is this word. And truly, this is what we have been thirsting for all of our lives. All right? Not Christianity. Not what the church is teaching you. Christianity. We weren't looking for that water. That wasn't the water that we was looking for, that we was thirsting for. The water that we was thirsting for was this truth, was this word. All right? So I can just put this one second. So stop this camera from getting hot. One second, family. Because I know this camera is going to warm up in this heat, but it should be all right for now. It's quite hot out here today. I'll just keep an eye on it anyway. So it says, For I will pour out my spirit. I will pour out water upon them that is thirsty. Right? We have been thirsty for this truth for so long. We just didn't know it until we found it. <laughs> you know, you, you're going to that shop and you get that, that drink. from says, taste this tree. You ever had this, this carrot juice with the ginger and the lime and the water without the milk and the sweet milk and the condensed milk and the milk? Taste it without that. And you realize, man, that was the carrot juice you was looking for. That was the real carrot juice, not the one that they was giving you with condensed milk, right? Sweetener and milk in it cow's milk and condensed milk to sweeten it that wasn't the one you realize that the real carrot juice was the one that was just made of water carrot juice lime and ginger right? this is like this word this is when we realize that the word that we have been looking for helicopters above 
Yeah. That, that this water that we were looking for was this word to find out who we were as a people, as a nation. Who are those people? Who are we? Who truly are we as a nation of people? Who are we? We've been running around trying to please all the nations, trying to be like all the other nations and please them and get their pleasure and trim, get to trimming our ways. The Bible says, why trimmest thou ways to seek love, Israel? Right? We kept on trimming our ways to seek love and that. And then we found out who we are and, and now they hate us even more. <laughs> they say, no, you, you can't be the Israelites. No, not you. Not those people that we enslaved, murdered, pillaged, raped, oppressed. You can't be the Israelites. No, 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 not you. Anyone else but you niggers. Basically, you Hispanics and Puerto Ricans and Mexicans and Native American Indians, anyone else but you guys, right? the people that they've oppressed the most, that they've taken the most from, that they've mistreated the most, are God's chosen people. So they're finding it out, just like our people are finding it out. And then you've got those of our people that don't want, don't want nothing to do with this because they want to continue to trim their ways to please their oppressors. Right? They're adversaries, they're oppressors. They want to continue to trim their ways. But we said, you know what, we've finished trimming our ways, mate. We're going to stand bold as a lion, like the Bible says, right? The righteous, is it? Um, Proverbs? Let's see if I can quickly find it. Uh, verse 28. Yeah, Proverbs 28, verse 1, where it says, The wicked flee, the wicked flee where no man pursueth. But the righteous are bold as a lion. So they are seeing these righteous men on the highways and hedges preaching boldly, calling on the name of their true Savior, Yahweh Shai, preaching against Christianity, preaching against Islam, but mainly preaching against Christianity, white Jesus, and preaching the true God of the Bible, the true power, the true Savior, preaching who the true people of the Bible are. We're condemning those that claim to be so-called Jews, and we are telling you that we are the real Jews. We are the true Israelites. So we are now standing bold as a lion on the highways and hedges, and we just pray that, that we're able to endure this to the end, that the Lord is, is going to keep us to the end. So we are, that, we are that lion on that corner that they hate, that they don't want to see. Um... Let's go grab another precept. James, we're going to go back to Isaiah. And we're just working in the spirit today. Like I say, I always like to do this at least a couple of times a week, man. Just two or three times a week. Just work straight through the spirit, man. Kind of like testing my own faith, you know, just by working in the spirit. Kind of like testing your own faith, in a sense, you know. Just see where it takes you. It's a beautiful thing. So, uh... Book of James, hold on, I'm going to find it, that's the book of John, Peter, read the book of Peter, hold on, okay, James chapter 4, verse 7, it says, submit yourselves, submit yourselves therefore to the Most High, Yahweh, resist the devil and he will flee from you. So we're resisting Christianity because Christianity, white Jesus, Christianity is the devil. The word devil means slanderer, deceiver. He is your slanderer. He is your deceiver. He slandered you for over 500 years and he continues to deceive you. That's who he is. He is your slanderer. He is your deceiver. So we're resisting Christianity. Resist, you know, this scripture could have just said, Submit yourselves, therefore, to the Most High, Yahweh. Resist Christianity. You could just re replace that word devil with the word Christianity. Resist Christianity, and he will flee from you. And that's what happens. When you resist Christianity, it truly does flee from you. Right? That's if you're able to hold on to this truth, because some of us resist it, and then they rebound, they, 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 they relapse like a junkie, you know, on drugs. They relapse and they go back to that drug of Christianity, white Jesus, trimming their ways to please the so-called white man. The scripture says that, right? I think it's Jeremiah. Hold on. We go into... No, I'm going too far. One second. 
Okay, Jeremiah 4, verse 22. For my people is foolish, they have not known me. They are sottish children. That's why they hold on to that Christianity. They are sottish children. And they have none understanding. And that's where we come in, the prophets of the Lord. The word prophet just means to tell before, to speak before. This is where we come in, to give you the understanding of your power, of who you are, of who the other nations are. They are, they are sottish children, and they have none understanding. They are wise to do evil. That's why we kill each other without, without in a blink of an eye. Right? They are wise to do evil, but to do good, they have no knowledge. And this is why we try to keep on reiterating to you. When you come back into the fold, it's not just knowing that you're an Israelite, it's changing your ways. That's where the word repent comes in. Repent, convert so that your sins can be blotted out. You change your ways. You stop doing the things that you used to do. We don't expect you to know all 16, 613 laws, commandments and statutes. But what we do expect you to do as time goes by, you start shedding, shedding that skin of Christianity, shedding the, you know, the skin of this world and put on the cloak, the white cloak. Which is the truth of the scriptures. Let's go back to Isaiah. So Isaiah 44, it says, For I will pour Isaiah 44, verse 3, for I will pour out, for I will pour water upon him that is thirsty, and floods upon dry grounds. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed, Israel and my blessing upon thine offspring. So we are the offsprings of the children of Israel. We are the seed, we are Jesharon. We are the seed of the children of Israel, all right? And they shall spring up among the grass as willows by the water of horses. <laughs> I tell you, you saw boy. <laughs> I'm just saying, look, that's her going up the hill there. I don't know if you can see her. That's her going up the hill, blasted all that. <laughs> it's an Edomite looking girl. That's an Edomite that's actually playing that tune. Right? But like I said, she could be a Jake. We don't know. I'm not going to uh, judge her and say that she's an Edomite. She could be a Jake. She's playing. She's, she's <laughs> that's what happens. Trust me. So, where was we? We was in Isaiah 44, verse 4. And they shall spring up as among the grass, as willows by the water courses. And that's what they saw, right? They see it spring up, spring up on the highways and hedges, amongst the grass, amongst the other nations. They see us spring up, talking boldly on the highways and hedges, calling out, the name of the Lord, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, prophesying the downfall of Babylon, the great United States of America, telling the so-called white man who he truly is, the wicked of the Bible, Esau, Edom. You know, we don't we don't dwell on that, but, you know, if they want to know who they truly are, we say who they are, all right? And we call out what's going to happen to them in the kingdom of heaven that's coming to earth. You know, this is what we do. We have sprung up like grass, amongst the grass, as willows by the water horses. That's what we have done completely sprung up it's beautiful it's beautiful to see him and it's like what apostle taha always say and double honors to the apostles as well double honors to the apostles of great millstone yeah our teachers in this truth you showed us to this truth through the powers of the holy spirit and names of the hell Double honors to our teachers and to our apostles you know but apostle taha always says you know they should be and this is his words and and then when he says there's a million and one camps out there, and that's just when he says a million and one, basically there should be camps everywhere. He's not talking exactly a million and one camps, but there should be truly, 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 truly. There's too many Israelites that know they're Israelite, men that know they're Israelites that are not partaking in doing the work. Now we're not asking, we're not saying that they should, they should be going out there, you know, try to go deep into scriptures. You know, if, you, if it's your first time out there, you just keep it simple. 
just do simple lessons, simple things, but you know, anything you're asked, just always refer to the scriptures. If you can't find it, just get the Blue Letter Bible out, do a search for what you're looking for, and then just kind of explain yourself. But truly, there should be. There should be. But you see, the, see, the reality is, there's going to be a million and one, right, figure of speech, Israelites looking to be saved when all hell breaks loose. That's when they're going to want to come. It's like when the Lord says, right, during their in Proverbs, we're going to go back to Isaiah. Yeah. We're going to go yeah, back yeah. to Isaiah. Like, so it's like what Solomon says here. King Solomon says here, right? Um, This is Proverbs chapter 1, verse 24. It says, Because I have called and you refused, I have stretched out my hand and no man regardeth. But ye have set at naught all my counsel and would none of my reproof. Right? They don't like when we reproof them when we tell them that, you know, you need to stop doing this, stop eating pork, stop doing that, you know bring yourself into the fold properly is it it's not an overnight process but look at the things that you know you can do all right verse 26 proverbs chapter 1 verse 26 i also will laugh at your calamity israel i will mock when your fear cometh, israel when your fear cometh as desolation the destruction the war of armageddon world war three and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind when distress and anguish comes upon you, then, this is when the million and one are going to be out in, in crying for the Lord, want to do something for the Lord, all right? This is when they're going to be out there, those men, that, that we keep telling you saying that, you know, that there should be a, a million and one camps out there, you know? This is when they're going to come. It says, then they shall call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me, for they have hated knowledge, and did not choose the fear of Yahweh. What did I say? We should be serving the Most High and fearing Him. And through fear, we serve Him. <laughs> you better believe, through fear, I serve the Most High. When I read the scriptures in the Bible and I see the works of the Most High, what He's done, what He's coming to do, I look at His past works <laughs> and His future works, I fear the Most High Yahweh. Believe me when I tell you. 2000, it was the year 2008 when Barack Obama was voted in president. I was an ardent Barack Obama fan before I found the truth. And that's when I started to hear and was watching videos on the Hebrew Israelites, the camps that were out there teaching at that time. I think at that time you had the GMS Great Millstone was out there. You had the 14th Street men that was out there, you had HODC that was out there, you had ISP UK that was out there, you had IUIC was out there, and like most things at first, you're kind of looking at all of them at first to see, but the spirit within a year within 12 months, the spirit locked me onto Great Millstone after looking at all of those different camps and hearing what they were saying regarding who we are by 2009 I was locked into GMS Great Millstone and I realized this is the camp I need to be following. This is the camp I need to be a part of. When I see how the elders, the apostles, were talking about fear and just telling you as it is. They wasn't, they wasn't cutting out anything. They wasn't adding anything. They wasn't diluting it. They was just giving you as it is, what we would call in the hood, real talk. They was just giving you the real talk. And I could see it. As terrible as some of it may have sounded, I could see it. Like, whoa, whoa! But yeah, that's the truth. Yeah, that's what the scripture says. Let's go with what the scripture says, you know. And then you realize. So that's my 15 years that that I've been a part of this truth. And then you start to start to realize that all of this, 
that the world was trying to show us and to give us and to make us believe in their policies and their systems, you know. All of this was just complete fake lies, an illusion. That's why the Lord said in Thessalonians that he's going to, um, the Lord said he's going he's, he's gonna to make them, he's going to make them, he's going to feed them their delusions, basically. Just paraphrasing it. And I could see that all that time I was being fed a delusion by society, by the world. And once you found out who I was, I was an Israelite, I was one of the most highest chosen people. And this was our heritage, this was our truth, this is where we, this is how we ended up where we were. Everything made sense to me. And I've never looked back since. I've never looked back since 2008. Never looked back since. That's my 15 years. Never looked back since. I realized Obama was a fake. <laughs> you know, all these things that they were saying about him. I realized, yeah, this is this man was completely set up to come into the fold to draw more so-called black people, Hispanics, Mexicans, Puerto Ricans, people of color in the Americas, into his trap, into his snare. He was the fowler that they put out for you black Americans and Hispanics and Puerto Ricans and Native American Indians and so forth and so on. He was the fowler. America is the snare. He was the fowler. He was the trap that they put here for you. So when the Lord says here in Proverbs, makes total sense. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 9. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 28, sorry. It says, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early in the beginning of the hell breaking out, but they shall not find me. For they, for that they, for that they hated knowledge and they did not choose the fear of Yahweh. We choose the fear of the Most High. They would none, which means they would not accept none of my counsel. They despise all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own ways and be filled with their own devices. All the system that they believe in is what the Most High is going to use to destroy the wicked two-thirds of the Israelites that are in the Americas and any Israelite that's around the world that is continued to go on, continually to go on with wickedness once they've found about this truth. The Lord is going to punish them, truly. It says, therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own ways and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. The prosperity of fools, that's the prosperity of this world. <laughs> it's going to destroy them. But whosoever hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from the fear of evil. Because the Most High creates peace and he creates evil. Just like what he says here, Isaiah 45, verse 5. I am the Lord, Yahweh, there is none else. There is no power besides me. I girded thee, Israel, though thou hast not known me, that they may know from the rising of the sun all the way to the far east and from the west to the Americas, all the way to the Americas, Australia, that there is none beside me. I am the Lord, Yahweh, and there is none else. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, Yahweh, do all these things. So what did Solomon say here? Proverbs chapter 1, verse 33. But whosoever hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from the fear of evil. So the evil that the Most High is going to bring to his left side. Those of us that fear the Most High Yahweh come back into the fold. Those of us that have truly repented and continue to repent because we sin every day. No man is without sin. Those of us that continue to do the things that the Most High is asking of us, that Yahweh Shai is asking of us, well, he will make us dwell safely. That's the, and that's the beauty of it all. It's lucky for me. That's the beauty of it all. 
So if we go back to Isaiah 44, it says, Isaiah 44, verse 5, One shall say, I am the Lord, Yahweh, and another shall call himself by my name, by the name of Jacob, he flies. And another shall subscribe with his hand unto Yahweh, and surname himself by the name of Israel, because it's all about Israel. <laughs> and in these days, the elect. Thus says the Lord, Yahweh, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord Yahweh of hosts, I am the first and I am the last. And beside me, and we just read that in Isaiah 45, right? There is no God, no power. There's only one God. Why Jesus ain't going to cut it when all hell breaks loose? Muhammad ain't going to cut it when all bre hell breaks loose. All of these other so-called religions are not going to cut it when all hell breaks loose. There's only one God, one power, one Yahweh, one Father, one, one, one Son. <laughs> and they're truly going to get it when all hell breaks loose. And who, verse 7, Isaiah 44, verse 7, and who, as I shall call, and, shall, and I shall declare it and set it in order for me, since I appointed the ancient people and the things that are coming and shall come, let them show unto them. Fear ye not, neither be afraid. Have I not told thee from the time that I have declared it? Ye are even my witnesses. Is there a power besides me? Yea, there is no power I know not of any. <laughs> Let me just say that again. Isaiah 44 verse 8. It says, Fear ye not, Israel, neither be afraid. Those of us that put their trust put their trust and their fear in the Lord neither be afraid right have I not told thee from that time have I not declared it ye are even my witnesses is there a power beside me yea there is no power I know not any praises all praise is none so what did the lord do the most high yahweh sent his son right because the christians like to continue debating about who did his son come for who did he come for who did he come for he, he came for israel and israel alone and we're going to read a few verses of that in the book of we just we just read we're starting the book of matthew here then we're going to go to the book of Luke. So, Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. Let me start at verse 20. Matthew chapter 1, verse 20. It says, But while he thought on these things, talking about Joseph, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, Fear not to take unto thee Mary, thy wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit, which means the Holy Spirit was put upon the child, the baby, while it was in the womb. The Holy Spirit didn't come down and impregnate Mary. Right? That's what Christianity teaches. That's what white Jesus teaches. That the Holy Spirit came down and impregnated Mary. That's total BS. Joseph and Mary had sex. Joseph impregnated Mary, all right, before the official marriage, the ceremony was taking place, all right, because as you know, sex is marriage, but there would be a ceremony that was part of that, all right, that normally takes would take place before them having sex. So it says here, verse 21, it says, and she shall bring forth a son, who's that? That's Mary, all right, Joseph's wife. And thou shalt call his name Yahawashai. Yah means he, Hawashai means deliverer. For he shall save his people, not the world. This is the angel telling Joseph this, <laughs> right? Who telling Joseph, the servant of the Lord, the chosen of the Lord, right? Joseph comes from the tribe of Judah. The angel is telling Joseph this. This is a direct message, right? from the Lord to tell Joseph and Mary, listen to this, this child that you're going to have, he's going to say, he's people, possessive pronoun, not the world, 
not anyone who believes these people from what from their sins so what are we trying to save you from i mean we can't save you but what we're we trying to redirect you from from tying yourselves to esau's system to his world to his beliefs we're trying to get you to separate yourselves from christianity from white jesus from islam if you're in the mosque we're trying to wake you up israel to say who you are because we have a savior his name is Yahweh Shai. He is coming to save his people. But in these last latter days that we are living in, he's only looking to save his elect. Not all of his people. Just his elect. Those that we refer to as the two thirds, the Lord is going to bring great havoc on them habit that they've never seen before only then they're going to truly know <laughs> that was the true power that those brothers were teaching everyone knows what it is that we are teaching the salvation that we are teaching who is for everyone knows who we are speaking to everyone knows who we are prophesying against who we are telling who are going to be captives and servants in the kingdom Everybody knows who we are telling who are going to be kings and priests in the kingdom. So this ain't low, like, oh, what was it those brothers were teaching? Everyone knows what it is that we are teaching. So let's go back. It says here, so he shall save his people from their sins. Okay. Which is who? Hey, that's uh, Yahweh Shai. He's going to save his people from their sins. Yeah, how shy is going to do that? I can't do it. You can't do it. The government can't do it. The welfare state can't do it. Only Yahweh yeah, Shai can do this. But that's if you're prepared to come back to him. So let me jump to the book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 68. So Luke, chapter 1, verse 68. It says, Blessed be the Lord God which is Yahweh of Israel of Israel right that's the key he's the power of Israel the Lord God of Israel blessed be the Lord God of Israel but he has what visited and redeemed his people not the world not, not the Christian church not what they claim what they think John 3 16 means Christians read the Bible, but they don't understand it. It's a simple fact. He has visited and redeemed his people. So when they go into John 3.16, let's just quickly go to it. This people that the Lord came for and is coming for again, these people that the angels told Joseph and Mary who he's coming to redeem, these people in John 3.16 are the Israelites. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, that whosoever believeth in him, that's whosoever of Israel, of the Israelites that believe in him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. Right? Should not perish, but should have everlasting life. Verse 17, for the Most High sent not his Son into the world, into the world of Israel, into the, to the Israelites, to condemn the Israelites, but that the world, the Israelites, through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned. That's the remnant, that's the elect. Those of you that believe in him, are not condemned those of you that come back repent convert come back are not condemned those of you that are seeking the true power your true savior of the bible is not condemned all right he that believes on him is not condemned but he that believes not is condemned what did solomon say he's gonna laugh solomon said <laughs> i have this the reason why i'm gonna quickly go back to it 
because this is like a spider's web and it just brings you straight back to Solomon. It's not condemned. What does Solomon say? He says here, uh, when we go back to Proverbs chapter 1, verse 26, he said, I will also laugh at your calamities. I will mock you when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation and your desolation cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer because they are going to be condemned, the non-believers of Israel. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. Why? Because the Most High, Yahweh Shai, is going to condemn them. So we go back to John chapter 3, verse 18. He that believeth on me, on him, Yahweh Shai, is not condemned. But he that believes is not, is condemned already. <laughs> That's why we just laugh at you, scorners, scoffers, naysayers, gainsayers. We laugh at you because we know you're condemned. Those of you that come out against us, those of you that was once in the truth and want to come and fight against the truth, you've gone back into the church and it's you. all your quest is, is try to try to debunk the Israelites. Volcab Malone is condemned. Do you understand? He's condemned already. We only engage in him to correct him. He gets edified through what we teach, Volcab Malone, and all those Christian apologies. They get edified by what we teach. We don't seek them out. We will just, they try to come against us, but they're condemned already. We just correct them for any Israelite that's just come into the truth can see that we use the scriptures to correct these scoffers, scorners, gainsayers. That's what we do. So he's already condemned. We ain't got to be concerned about him. He's completely already condemned. Simple as that. We ain't got to worry about him at all. So it says, because he has, it says, he that believes on him is not condemned, but he that believes not is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of the Most High Yahweh. Once again, Vocab Malone don't believe in the name of the Most High Yahweh and Son Yahweh He's a Jesus Christ, Jesuit priest, Christian church, you know, Calvinist reformer follower. That's what he believes in. He don't believe in the true name of the Most High, the true name of his son, Yahweh Shai. All right? And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, that light is this truth, through Yahweh Shai, through the powers of the Holy Spirit, in the name of Yahweh Shai. All right? And men love darkness rather than light. Israel, Israelites, that's why two-thirds of the children of Israel are going to die in the Americas, because they love darkness more than they love light. Right? They love darkness more than they love light. It says here, and this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world. The truth. This is the light. It broke through the darkness of Christianity, of white Jesus. It broke through the, the darkness of the churches, the Protestant Catholic. This was the light. The light was the Hebrew Israelites that was teaching through the powers of the Holy Spirit in the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. This was the flash. This was the um what's that light that you have on top of the um when a ship's coming into shore, I forget what they call it again, the big light that's flashing down onto, into the sea to guide the ships into the shore in, in the night time. I forget what it's bloody called, I can see it. <laughs> Is it a light tower? I think it's called a light tower. All right. I mean, probably can put it up on the comic board if they know what it is I'm speaking about. I think it's called a light tower. Something like that. It guides the ship in. Well, this was that light that was shining to all of that darkness was this truth. Right? Terrifies them, terrifies the Christian church. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. That's why the Lord is coming to strip those two thirds of Israel, boy, the wicked two thirds of our people, because they love evil. They love selling drugs. They love pimping out their, their brothers and their sisters, right? They love committing acts of homosexuality. They love eating all the unclean foods, right? They love killing each other. They love committing adultery to each other. They love the evil more than they love the light. This is the condemnation. And what did Solomon say? Go back to Solomon. Solomon said this. Um, Solomon, Proverbs chapter 1, verse 33. But whosoever hearkeneth unto me, unto this light that shines through this darkness, this truth, 
shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from the fear of evil. You understand? But two thirds of Israel, they love the fear, they love the evil, because their deeds are evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth light. Right? So we're still in the book of John, chapter 3, verse 20. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. They hate the light. All of those that do evil, they hate the light. Which is this truth, which is the word of Yahweh Bashim Hel Shai. The prophets they hate it right neither cometh neither cometh to the light lest his deeds should be reproved and that's what we're gonna do we're gonna we're gonna tell you what you need to do we're gonna reprove you we're gonna tell you what you need to do to come into this light it's that separation from the world it's adhering to the laws, commandments, and statutes to the best of your ability because no man can follow all of them. And even if you could, if you was even able to follow every single law and you denied your how shy, you can't receive salvation. There's no chance of you because it's all about your faith. Your faith is the cornerstone of your salvation. That you believe that through the things that you're doing, you're going to receive safe salvation through your how shy. Just so you understand. So it says, For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be proved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light. So we came to the light and we give all the praise and the glory to Yahweh Shim Yahushai. We thank the Lord that we had great teachers like the apostles of Great Millstone. Their teachers, the elders, Marshia, Ariar, the seven. We thank the Lord for that lineage that to be continuing today. That there was men dedicated, truly dedicated to bringing this light to us through the powers of the Holy Spirit. To enable us to see that light. Which is this truth. To hear the new song that was being sung. That was condemning the old song of Christianity, White Jesus. It was giving you the new song. It was beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Come on. So we saw that light. Completely saw that light. And we give all the praise and the glory to you by Shimei Hoshai for that. This is for everyone that does evil, hate is the light. Neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth that doeth truth cometh to the light. And his deeds and that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in the most high. <laughs> we praise the Yahweh Shem Shai. So let's go back to the book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 68. So it says, Blessed he, blessed be the Lord, power of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. Right? His people, not the world, his people. And has raised up and home. Of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. Who is that horn of salvation? Yahweh Shai. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. So nothing has changed. And when we are saying that we are those prophets today, nothing has changed. Every spirit is reincarnated to the third or fourth generation of a you know, particular tribe or family line, lineage, so forth and so on. Reincarnated. So we are those holy prophets today. I say this with a humble spirit. The word prophet means to speak before. We are telling you before all hell breaks loose who you are, who the nations are, what's coming, how it's going to come, what you need to do. You need to wake up. You need to get out of those churches. You need to repent. You need to convert. You need to come back to your house shy. You need to accept that you're an Israelite. You need to start doing the things that the Lord is asking you. You need to stop eating those unclean foods. You need to start committing those acts that were against the scriptures, against the word. You need to start re-engaging with the true power of the Bible. Yahweh, through his son, Yahweh Shai. <laughs> so it says here, Luke chapter 1 verse 70. As he spake by the mouth of these holy prophets, which have been since the world began. Nothing's been changed. Right? <laughs> That he would, that, that we should be saved, we, 
Israel, the Israelites, in these last days, the elect, should be saved from our enemies. Who are your enemies today? Your main enemies is the Edomites, Esau, Edom, the Edomites, the so-called white man. That's your main enemies that call themselves Caucasians, Europeans. Your next enemy would be the Arabs, main enemy, the Ishmaelites. To be saved from your enemies, because Christianity and Islam are the two greatest enemies of the scriptures. Islam doesn't believe that Yahweh Shai is the son of the Most High. Christianity believes that the son of the Most High is a Caucasian white Edomite devil that wants to save anyone that believes. Come as you are. So both of them are enemies of this truth, which makes them enemies of you, Israel. If you're able to receive this truth, they are enemies of you. So it says here that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. Now, come on. I mean, is it any clear? They all hate us, starting from the so-called white man, the Edomites. They hate you the most, right? Then running a close second is the Ishmaelites, the Arabs. Running third would be the who? The so-called Chinese, the Moabites. But ultimately, and then fourth probably would be the Africans, the Hamites, the actual Africans, the actual Hamites. But ultimately, they all hate you because they all know who you are. What did... King David say in Psalms. <laughs> King David says in the book of Psalms, right? The fact that the Lord is telling this to the disciples. King David says that in, in Psalms. He says the same thing. The Lord is, is telling you. King David says the same thing. Psalms 83 verse 2. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, make a great noise, a great fuss. And they that hate thee have lifted up their head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people, the Israelites, and consulted against thine hidden ones, the true children of Israel. They have said, come, let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee, the tabernacles of Edom, the Edomites, the so-called white man, the Ishmaelites, the Arabs, the Moabites, the Chinese, the Hagarines, going back to the Africans. Just so you understand, these are your enemies, your main enemies. They have taken crafty counsel against you. So the Lord is telling the disciples the same thing here. And this resonates up until today. And it says here, go back to Luke chapter 1, verse 71. It says that we should be saved from our enemies from all of those nations Edom, Moab, Ishmael, Hagarines, all of those nations that have taken confederate against us they've come together with one consent so that the name of Israel shall no more be in remembrance that's why they gave you these different nationalities names and cultures and languages to speak verse 72 Luke chapter 1 verse 72 to perform the mercy promise to our fathers right? and to remember his holy covenant who well, praises to hell by shimmy hawashai who did he make the covenant with he made it with the children of israel let's just quickly grab it to remember the holy covenant hold on so i'm just grab a brief second Deuteronomy 14 verse 2 For thou art a holy people unto Yahweh thy power and the Lord Yahweh has chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself above all nations that's the holy covenant that are upon the earth right so we are that holy nation that the Lord 
made. If we go to the Exodus, hold on. Another one I'm thinking of as well. Genesis chapter 17, verse 1. And when Abraham was 90 years old, that's before his name was changed to Abraham, he was 90 years and nine, 99 years old, the Lord Yahweh appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the Almighty Power, I am Yahweh. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee. I will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abraham fell on his face, and the powers talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Because Israel, twelve tribes are twelve nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abraham, but thy name shall be called Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made thee. And I will make thee exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. And I, will and I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee, in their generations, for an everlasting covenant. Right? For an everlasting covenant. To be a power unto thee, and to thy seed after thee. And I will give unto thee, and to thy seed after thee, the land wherein thou art a stranger all of the land of canaan for an everlasting possession and i will be their power and the power said unto abraham thou shalt keep my covenant therefore thou and thy seed after thee in their generations this is my covenant which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee every man child among you shall be circumcised and ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin and it shall be a token of the covenant between me and you. All right? And he, and he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you, every man child in your generation. He that is born in the house or brought with money of this, any stranger which is not of thy seed. He that is born in thy house and he that is brought with thy money must needs be circumcised and my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant so a token of that covenant was what was circumcision hence why they circumcise on the eighth day so let's quickly go back to um, luke chapter 1 verse 72 it says to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant right the oath that he swore to our father abraham which i just read right that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him in all the days of our life and thou child shall be called the prophet of the highest for thou shalt go before the face of the lord to prepare his way to give knowledge of salvation unto the, his people by the permissions of their sins right so through the tender mercy of our power whereby the day spring from on has visited us right so Zechariah is getting all of this information from the angel regarding the Lord Yahweh Shai and what his son because his son went before right the Lord to declare him to give knowledge of salvation to the people John the Baptist did that telling them about your savior Yahweh Shai so Zechariah is receiving all of this information from the angel regarding Yahweh Shai, regarding his son, what his son John the Baptist is going to do in bringing the people, the children of Israel, back to Yahweh Shai. To do what? To give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remissions of their sins. That's what John the Baptist is going to do. Give them knowledge of the salvation unto his people, the Israelites, by the remissions of their sins to repent and convert 
through the tender mercy of our power, whereby the day spring from one has visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet unto the way of peace. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, and was in the desert to the day of his showing unto Israel. So this is all about Israel. All about Israel. The salvation is about Israel. It's not about any other nation. All right? We are the Lord's servant. We are the Lord's chosen. It's us he made the covenant with. It's up to us to come back to Yehovah. Because as I said yesterday, the clock truly is ticking. We are in the latter days of the latter days. Whether you want to hear or whether you want to forbear. So we just hit the hour mark. I think we're going we're gonna to close it there. So, as always, I pray you are edified by today's edification, which came from the book of Isaiah, chapter uh, 44. Hear, hear, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen. The Lord chose you people, you family, you Israel. Whether you not, you want to receive your Savior, your true Savior, whether you not, you want to choose him, well, you can't even choose him. He chooses you. Let me just rephrase that. You can't choose the Lord. He chooses you. He knows who he's, who he's elect is and who they ain't. He knows who he wants to wake up and who he doesn't. So, if I was you, I'd be praying that the Lord continues to keep you awake for you to endure this path to the end. For I pray every night that the Lord strengthens my spirit and my faith until the end true so as always i want to give all the praises and the glory to our lord and savior yahweh Vahasham, yahweh shai double honors to the apostles and to the elders of great millstone shalom to my fellow hebrew israelite brothers and sisters that have been edified by today's edification for i pray you are all edified by today's word as they always say keep praying keep safe repent and hold on to this true family. Hold on tight. Two hands. Shalom. 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 All praises, family. Shalom.